Greg, what's the, what's the optimum distance of that from here to here? Really? As, as much as that? Yeah. All right. this morning and I've got that job really because when I came in I was so excited to, to see the band here again I, I just about could have taken off but actually um, it was maybe a mistake because I, I feel tears in my eyes I don't know about all of you but I just feel so joyful to see you all here again to be here worshipping with you all again so welcome to church this morning I've got some things to remember. We have got coffee and tea after church down in St. Mary's Hall, and it would be absolutely wonderful to share some fellowship with you all down there. And um, as you can see, when we're, when we're singing, the, the people that are singing up here are, you know, don't have to actually wear masks. So if you would like to sing without a mask, you might want to consider volunteering to come up here and, and lead worship, or if you can play an instrument as well, of course. So I, I really hope that you enjoy this morning. Um, have I remembered everything? Yeah. Yeah, and enjoy this morning worshiping together. Oops. Can I add my welcome? Uh, there's quite a few things to, uh, to say. Next week, we're going to start our, our Sunday club again. It's going to be exciting and spiritually nourish nourishing for our children. So if you know any children um, between P1 and then they can come along to Sunday club next week. We'll start here in church, as we usually do, and then... Um, after the second hymn, they'll go down to church. There'll be, we're hoping to have a creche as well for, for children who are under the age of P1 and um, five years old and under in the vestry, but we need folks to volunteer for that. We also need, need volunteers for our Sunday club too. So be considering whether God might be calling you to help to uh, nurture our children in the faith. 
next week. Also, we start a new series. We're going to be looking at, a, at the whole theme of creation care. Maybe you saw in the news the IPC, the Intergovernmental uh, Panel on Climate Change, came out last week. Climate change is a huge concern for all of us and should be for us who belong to the family of God. COP26 is happening in November. Hopefully that will be a, a, a meeting of government heads to make some big changes that are needed in our world. We want, as a church, prepare for that and think about our responsibility in terms of God's creation as God's people. So we'll be doing that throughout, up until um, November the 7th, which is COP 26 Sunday. We're not going to take up an offering today. We're slowly but surely, we're going to get back to normality, but uh, we're not going to take up an offering today. So when you come to church, <clears throat> you can bring your, leave your offering in the plate um, at the door or at this door as well as you go out. This morning, we're going to explore the beginning of the book of Ezra. <clears throat> Ezra tells the story of folks returning from exile in Babylon to Judah and the city of Jerusalem. This morning, it's a bit like a return from exile for so many of us, as, as Anne has said. And we want to reflect on God's word as we return from exile. Let's begin our worship with a psalm. A psalm that was written recounting that same event of returning from exile and asking God to do the same in the day that the psalmist wrote it. Psalm 126. We're going to do this responsively. I'll read the red bit if you will read the white. When the Lord... Let's stand. Let's stand for this. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion... Our mouths were filled with laughter. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for us. Restore our fortunes, Lord. Those who sow with tears. Those who go out with weeping will return with songs of joy. Our opening song is the song, This Little Light of Mine. Let's sing together. you. <clears throat> Let's turn to God in prayer as we approach him. Lord God, thank you for inviting us to come, to 
come before you this morning, to come together this morning. Thank you that in Jesus you have made a way for us to come. You have made a way for us who were dead in our sin to come alive. And you've given us not just life, but you've given us an identity. You have called us your sons and your daughters. And you invite us to come and share our needs and our concerns with you. And thank you that you don't just listen to us, although you do that so well, Lord. But in listening, you also respond. You heal where we have wounds. You repair where we are broken. You give us courage when we are afraid. You give us wisdom and guidance when we feel lost and confused. And Lord, I must admit, I feel lost and confused throughout this pandemic. And so we ask you, Lord, to come and heal and repair and give us courage and wisdom and guidance this morning. Come by your spirit, Lord. Come and amaze us. Let's take a moment to quietly prepare our hearts to hear and see God here amongst us. Let's say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is a kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Ellie's going to come now and read our scripture for us this morning. Um, the reading this morning is taken from Ezra. Chapter 1, starting at verse 1 and reading to chapter 2, verse 2. And I'm reading from the message translation. In the first year of... of, I'll start again. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, this fulfilled the message of God preached by Jeremiah. God prodded Cyrus, king of Persia, to make an official announcement throughout his kingdom. He wrote it out as follows. From Cyrus, king of Persia, a proclamation. God, the God of heavens, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has also assigned me to build him a temple of worship in Jerusalem, Judah. Who among you belongs to his people? God be with you. Go to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the temple of God, the God of Israel, Jerusalem's God. Those who stay behind, wherever they happen to live, will support them with silver, gold, tools, and pack animals, along with free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem. The heads of the families of Judah and Benjamin, along with the priests and Levites, everyone, in fact, God prodded, set out to build the temple of God in Jerusalem. Their neighbors rallied behind them enthusiastically with silver, gold, tools, pack animals, expensive gifts, and over and above these, free will offerings. Also, King Cyrus turned over to them all the vessels and utensils from the temple of God that Nebuchadnezzar had hauled from Jerusalem and put in the temple of his gods. Cyrus, king of Persia, put Mithridath, the treasurer, in charge of the transfer. He provided a full inventory for Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah, including the following. 30 gold dishes, 1,000 silver dishes, 29 silver pans, 30 gold bowls, 410 duplicate silver bowls, 1,000 miscellaneous items. 
All told, there were 5,400 gold and silver articles that Shesh Bazar took with him when he brought the exiles back from Babylon to Jerusalem. These are the people from the province who now returned from the captivity, exiles whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried off captive. They returned to Jerusalem and Judah, each to his hometown. They came in company with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Sariah, Reliah, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mizpah, Bigvi, Rehem, and Barna. This is the word of God. Well done with all those names, Ellie. (laughs) It's I Have a Maker. Um, I appreciate the choice, the choice of the, these, the words in this song, they speak to me about how God knows me and he knows my little grandson. And uh, as many of you know, it's been a, a wee bit of a journey this summer. And the words of this song assure me that, that God sees him and saw him before he was even born. And, and God sees me and he sees me at times when, when there are tears falling and, uh, and I'm I'm just uncertain, but this song assures me that God hears and and sees each tear that falls. Let's stand to sing, I Have a Maker. Please be seated. Let's pray. Lord God, you hear us when we call, and we call now to invite your spirit to come and inspire us as we turn to reflect on your word. We pray in this name. Amen. Ezra. It's not a book of the Bible that I am very familiar with. I wonder if you are. But it's a fascinating story, and there are a lot of things in this story that I think can encourage and teach us, especially us, in the situation in which we find ourselves today. The story related to us in the first part of the book of Ezra takes place when King Cyrus of Persia, which is now modern-day Iran, conquered a huge number of countries throughout the world, including the country Babylon, where many of the people of God had gone as slaves. 
They were taken there by King Nebuchadnezzar. I wonder if you've ever heard the name of that king before. Now, Ellie's just read the first part of that story, so I'm not going to repeat it. But I'd like us to understand this story. And I I think a good way for us to understand any story is for us to put ourselves into the story. So can I invite you to pretend this morning that we are in this story? Now, in the story, there are various players. There is King Cyrus the Great. So we need a King Cyrus. And I saw a volunteer before. So come up, King Cyrus. Rachel's going to be our King Cyrus. He had a big black beard. She's going to put that on and put the crown on her head as well. (laughs) Okay, not only was there a king in the story, there were also priests and Levites. So we need some priests and Levites. Now these are people who would be in charge of organizing worship in Jerusalem and rebuilding the temple when they got there. So maybe this half of the congregation could be our priests and Levites, including you there in the south transept. Okay, you're the priests and the Levites. Not only were there, was there a king and priests and Levites, there were also families. There you go. Lovely beard, lovely beard. Well manicured. Did you go to that new barber as well? I went to the new barber last week. Got my hair cut by an apprentice. He was one of the high school students I knew in the high school. So, yeah, I'm looking quite dandy as well, aren't I? (laughs) So we've got a king. We've got priests and Levites. We've got families. There were lots of families who returned to Jerusalem from Babylon. And what else was there? There were also donkeys. Donkeys and cattle. So you up there in the balcony, you can be our donkeys and our cattle, okay? So put yourself in the story, put on your imagination caps. It says at the beginning of the story that God prodded Cyrus, and when Cyrus was prodded, he wrote a letter. So do you want to read your letter, King Cyrus? There's a, there's a microphone here for you. Well, maybe you could go to the lectern. From King Cyrus of Persia, me, a proclamation. God, the God of heavens, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has also assigned me to build him a temple of worship in Jerusalem, Judah. Who among you belongs to his people? God be with you. Go to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the temple of God, the God of Israel, Jerusalem's God. Those who stay behind, wherever they happen to live, will support them with silver, gold, tools, and pack animals, along with free will offerings to the temple of God in Jerusalem. Great, wonderful. Okay, Cyrus reads his letter, and then the book says that the people, not only was Cyrus prodded to write his letter, but the people were prodded by God to set out to build the temple in Jerusalem. What do you think it means? I see Will doing it right now. What do you think it means to prod someone? What does it mean to be prodded by God? Now, in some of the translations, in in, um, the NIV, it says they were moved by God. In the Good News Bible, which is the one we usually have in our pews, it says that they were prompted by God, as if they were actors in a play and uh, God was whispering in their ear. But here in the message translation, it says they were prodded. And I looked that word up in the Hebrew and actually prodded is a better word. It means to be awoken. God woke Cyrus up. He woke the people up. God prods I wonder if that has ever happened to you. I was talking to someone who's with us here this morning 
who's just started joining us in worship this morning. It's the first time they've come to church. They've been joining us online before now. And he told me that God had prodded him to come and join us here in our family in Bigger Kirk. He was praying one day and thinking about things. They had just moved to Bigger, and he wanted to serve God and wanted to be part of what God is doing here in Bigger. And God prodded him to get in touch with me. Sometimes God might prod you to do something as well. It might be that he prods you to show some kindness to someone that you know needs some kindness. Maybe God is prodding you to do something really adventurous as well. Maybe he's also prodding you to do something simple. But God is in the business of prodding his people, and that's what he did in the story of Ezra. Prodding happens when we pray and we listen to God, and it may also happen when someone else suggests something that we know in our hearts is the right thing to do. Well, the people of God were prodded by God and by Cyrus on this occasion to return to Jerusalem. And so the people who were prodded got everything ready. There were other people, and this I think is important, who weren't prodded to go to Jerusalem. There were some who felt it was right to stay in Babylon. They felt it was right to stay in Babylon, at least for the time being. But they were prodded to give gifts to help with the worship in Jerusalem and the building of the new temple. And Cyrus didn't leave the people who were traveling back to Jerusalem empty-handed either. All the things that were needed in the temple that had been stolen by King Nebuchadnezzar, Cyrus gave back to them. There's a list there in verse nine. All those things that were stolen, all the silver and gold from the temple, all the utensils they needed. You had to pretend here, okay? We're pretending. This is silver and gold that had been stolen from the temple in Jerusalem, taken to Babylon and put in the temple of the God of Babylon. Cyrus said, you can have it back. Take it to Jerusalem with you. Use it in the temple again for the worship of God. Okay, those are our utensils. So they set out to return to Jerusalem. And we're going to do that. We're going to return to Jerusalem. So I want to invite you. Now there's some who are not prodded to move. But if you're prodded to move, could you get up as we sing this next song Come and take a utensil, if you, if you will, if there are any left. Go out that door and come back in the back door. We're going, we're going to, in the front door. We're going to Jerusalem. We're going to put ourselves into the story. Cyrus, you don't need to go because you're going to stay in Susa, which is the capital of Persia. And uh, the musicians don't need to go. You're not being prodded. I'm prodding you to stay here so you can play the music. We're going to sing. We're marching in the light of God as we do this. You don't all have to go, but if you want to go, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's sing as we, we do our movement. I'm going to go too.
What a journey we have been on. I noticed that some people, the first thing they did was to uh, sanitize their hands. They want to get rid of the dirt of Babylon as they come to the holy city of Jerusalem. A very good practice, actually. What a journey we've been on. Prodded by God and having responded to him, we are now in the holy city of Jerusalem. Now, it's important that we understand that the people of God have been away for 50 years. Many people who went from Judah to Babylon died in Babylon. There were some who had been born in Jerusalem and came back. But there were many who were born in Babylon who never knew Jerusalem who were there that day and entered the And if you were an old timer, had been born in Judah and went to Babylon and then came back, there would have been mixed feelings. You would have looked around and seen that pile of stones that used to be your home. You would have looked over here and seen that tree where you carved the name of your sweetheart and yourself, and your sweetheart is no longer with you. And you would have looked and saw where the, the holy temple used to stand, and it's only a pile of rubble now. You're, you're grateful to be home, but so much has changed. And then there's the new generation that was born in Babylon, and they don't know why they've come here. This place is so unfamiliar. They sing songs that, that we've never sung. They speak in a language that, that we don't speak usually in Babylon. They're used to the shopping malls and the hanging gardens of Babylon, and, and Jerusalem is a dump in comparison. There's so many mixed feelings as they come to this place. It is the holy city. It is the promised land. But it's going to get some, it's going to take some time to figure out how that all fits together. And it's interesting, although the people would have had all those mixed feelings, the first thing that they do before they do anything else maybe after they've sanitized their hands, <laughs> is that they rebuild the altar of God. The first thing they do is rebuild the altar of God. Now, the altar of God was the place where they would make sacrifices to God. In other words, it was the place where they would offer their thanksgiving and their praise to God. So the first thing they do in this unknown place, unknown yet familiar place, is to give thanks to God. And they also, it says in the text, they celebrate the Feast of Booze. Now, we've talked about the Feast of Booze before. It happened about this time of year. It was a harvest festival. And it was a commemoration of the time when the people of God were in the wilderness coming back from exile in Egypt. So at the outset of trying to settle again in this familiar yet unfamiliar land, the first thing that the people do is to remember God's faithfulness to a past generation who were in the same circumstances that they are in. And they also come to give thanks for all that God is doing in this generation, even through an exile and even in a city that is in is much to thank God for. And I, I wonder if we could stop for a moment and think about all that we have to be thankful for 
even in the midst of this continuing pandemic, even with all the unknowns that are ahead of each and every one of us. Now you've got a little post-it there in the pew that you were given when you came in. I wonder if you could write on it one or two things that you are thankful for. And when you've done that, could you pass them to the center? And could I have a couple of elders come and bring those up to me? Penny is going to help to bring that up. And yeah. So we'll we'll also bring our offering in now. Great, wonderful, thank you. That's excellent. The love of my family, knowing God, my family, being aware of friends, thank you. Friends and family, faith, family, good health. Give family again, health and work, being able to worship together again, and a new grandson, the love of God. So much to be thankful for this morning. Thank you. Family, health, support of my community. Safe return to church, fellowship. Thank you. Life, family again. Good health. A happy childhood to remember. Health, love of friends. My pet, my pet bunny. (laughs) lots to be thankful for wonderful technology that enables all to be included is just wonderful my church family again so much to be thankful for I'll put that down by the altar and let's just thank God together let's pray together Lord thank you Thank you that you, you bless us. You bless us all the time, even when we're not aware of it. And we can look back and, and see that you have walked with us, blessing us all the way. Even through hard times, you are there. And you give us so much. Lord, help us to have thankful hearts for all that you give. And shape our hearts to be hearts that also give to others. And we thank you for the offerings of the people of God that that keep the work of God going in this church. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we've been prodded by God. We've had the help of a king. We've had the support of our neighbors in Babylon. And we've marched all the way to Jerusalem. We've built that altar. And when we did that, we have remembered all that God has done for those who have gone before us. And we remember what God is doing for us, even through the difficult times of exile and continuing pandemic. Now, what did the people do next? Well, they start to build. They get organized and they build the foundations of a new temple. And they do it in only two years. The temple's a mammoth building. So building the foundation in two years is very quick. Especially considering all the obstacles they were facing trying to settle in this new land. The people of God in Ezra's time 
started well. They started well by responding to God's prodding. They started well by joining together and supporting one another, having a unity of spirit. And they started well by remembering God's faithfulness and giving thanks to God for what he has done and what he is doing. Now, sure enough, there were going to be obstacles in the way forward. But there's one thing above all that would help the people of God keep going in those days, and it's something that can help us keep going too. In another place in the Bible, in the book of the prophet Isaiah, God says to the people who are just about to return from exile, Something that I think was in the back of the minds of the folks there in Jerusalem in that early part of Ezra. And what Isaiah says can encourage us today too. God says through his prophet, I took you from the ends of the earth. From the farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you. I've chosen you out of all the people. And I have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God says in the fifth line down, don't be afraid. I am with you. Kids, as you go back to school, kids and teachers, as you go back to school, adults, as you struggle with coming out of this pandemic in terms of family life, in terms of work, and all the other things that we have to do, and all the other things that we're up against, church, as we get to grips with this new season of our life together, let's all remember God's promise to the returning exiles. I am with you. Do not be afraid. I've made some badges that say just that. And I want every child to have one. Um, I think there are plenty for adults too. I am with you. And it gives the, the Bible verse in very small letters, Isaiah 41.10. Kids, could you put those on your backpacks? Teachers, could you put them on your chest when you go to school? And if anyone asks you, tell them that you believe that God is with you. And because God is with you, you are with them. You are with them. We're in this together with God as we go forward. Let it remind you that whatever situation you face in the coming days, God promises to be right there by your side. You don't need to be afraid. He will help you. He will guide you if you only trust him. Let's sing together our hymn of response. Restore, O Lord. Asking God to restore our fortunes as in Psalm 126. Restore, O Lord.
Let's turn to God in prayer. We're remembering the words of Psalm 126 as we pray together. Lord, we are in awe of what you have brought us through in these last 18 months. Like those saints of old in Ezra's time, we give you thanks. We bring our sacrifices of praise. We are, in many ways, like those who dreamed. Though we have lost much for which we mourn, we are still here. And there is much to be thankful for. But like the saints of old and like the psalmist, we recognize and long for a, a, a further and fuller restoration. We know that we're not there yet. We long for those streams of your spirit flowing out to more and more people and more and more situations in our families, in our community, and in our world. There are still so many situations where folks are going out with weeping. And we cry out with them to you, Lord, that they would, by the help of your strong arm, return with songs of joy. And so we name before you the needs that we know personally and the needs we have only heard of through the news. We bring before you those suffering with chronic illness. And I remember a friend who finds it hard to get around. Can't even climb the stairs in the house anymore. We remember a family who are living daily with cancer. And we remember folks with other ailments. And we name them before you now in the silence. We bring before you this situation in Plymouth. We remember those who have lost loved ones and those who have lost peace of mind and are afraid because of that shooting. And come, Lord Jesus, rise on all of these folks with your healing. Give them the peace that only you can give, even in the midst of their storms. And further afield, we cry out to you for the people of Afghanistan. We pray that whatever transition of power that happens, that families, moms, dads, children, and old folk would be protected from harm. We pray for those who have already been harmed, those who have been injured in the fighting, those who have had to flee their homes, and those who are hungry. And we ask you, God, to give them what they need to help restore them and their communities. And we pray that you would prod people, both individuals and governing authorities, to help this situation. And we pray for our young people and our teachers getting back to school this week. May they go knowing that you are with them to strengthen them and see them through whatever lies ahead. May they have much joy being together with classmates and staff members. And finally, we pray for ourselves. 
May we, along with your whole creation, be restored to that life that you have always intended for us in the kingdom of your Christ, our Lord. For we pray in his name. Amen. Our final hymn is the hymn, One More Step Along the World I Go. Let's stand and sing. receive God's blessing folks after this service could you exit through the side door there folks leap and sing in all you do even if it's only in your heart if you can't do it physically do it emotionally and spiritually go into the world and know that wherever you go promise of the Lord who loves you and upholds you is sure with you end of the age blessing of God almighty father son and holy spirit rest and remain with us all evermore amen <laughs>